Archival sound recordings. A critical mass of the world's rich audio heritage at your fingertips. You've just been listening to the booming call of a bittern, recorded in marshlands in Norfolk in 1966. It's one of thousands of sounds you can find in the British Library's Archival Sound Recording Service, which draws on the wealth of audio collected by the library to provide digital sound recordings over the internet. The groundbreaking service offers free online access to many rare, unpublished or out-of-print recordings, from classical, folk and world music to drama, oral history and natural soundscapes. Over 2,000 of the recordings are available to the public online, while staff and students at UK higher and further education institutions can also log in and play or download recordings and repurpose them for academic use. Among the thousands of recordings are collections of Beethoven string quartets and the story of six decades of jazz in Britain, told by the musicians and promoters who lived it. And it's not just about music. Leading painters and sculptors discuss their lives and work in a series of in-depth interviews. And there's the chance to eavesdrop on debates held with public figures in the 1970s in the Bow Dialogues. But that's not all. With the richness also comes depth. Because the service draws on the British Library's massive archive of recordings, every collection contains a huge number of examples. Take the Beethoven collection of string quartets, a unique archive of performances which spans nearly a hundred years. Having all these recordings available in one place for the first time means that music students and researchers can easily compare changing styles and approaches to Beethoven's work over the years. Vashman's field recordings of indigenous music in Uganda are one of the rarest collections in the resource. The set features around 1,500 recordings he made while curator of the Uganda Museum in Kampala. It's the most comprehensive collection of music from the country in its pre-independence days, and it's now being used by a postgraduate student to reintroduce traditional music into Uganda. Ginevra House, engagement officer at the British Library, explains more. Uh, another example is with Samuel Kahunde, who's a PhD student in Sheffield, and he's from Uganda, and he's studying ethnomusicology. He came across the Waxman collection of recordings from Uganda on archival sound recordings and decided to base his thesis around that. And he's been working closely with the Bunyoro court to restore music that ceased to be used in, during the reign of Idi Amin when the kingdoms in Uganda were abandoned. And in the 1990s, the kingdoms were reinstated. But the music had pretty much been forgotten. So there's a few musicians there that remember it from decades ago, and a few younger musicians that are trying to learn it, having never heard what it should actually sound like before. So by using Waxman's recordings from the 1950s and playing these to musicians, uh, Samuel's able to reintroduce the music and give the young musicians a real idea of what they're aiming for. And he's now working closely with the Binuro court and with the kingdom to restore this music. And it's research that's likely to go on well beyond the scope of his PhD. Spoken word collections are also a feature of the archive, as Ginevra House explains. One very important collection is the Jewish survivors of the Holocaust, which documents the stories of around 65 people who survived concentration camps in the Second World War. And it really tells their whole life stories from their early experiences of anti-Semitism and living in the ghetto to uh, life in concentration camps, resistance against the Nazi regime, experiences of liberation, and then now, you'd have thought that that would be the happy ending, but then trying to pick up the pieces of your life and trace family after liberation, and then emigrating to 
the UK because they're all interviews with British Jewish community and uh, creating a life after that. Access to these rare recordings is now direct and unmediated. You don't have to ask a librarian to retrieve it for you or read someone else's transcription. Listeners can engage directly with the content wherever and whenever they choose to listen to it. Whether it's Beethoven's string quartets, African work songs, British birdsong, or cars going over cattle grids, there's a recording somewhere in this service which will make you think about sound in an entirely different way. The resource is brought to you by JISC, the Joint Information Systems Committee with the British Library.